Okay, so um, my name's Talia and I'm in Chico and I've been um, a Young Living member for just over two and a half years. And I'm teaching this class because I didn't, when I first got the oils, I didn't really realize uh, how emotionally supportive they were. You know, you get your starter kit and the starter kit has lavender and peppermint and thieves and purification. And there's one oil in there that says stress away. So to me, when I first got my kit, I was thinking that that was the only one that really helped me with my emotions. And once I experienced the full power of that stress away, when I was having a serious, serious mom moment, <laughs> um, I didn't really know what to do with the oils, but I saw it and I grabbed it and I just took four good, long, deep breaths. And I calmed down so much that I, um, it blew me away. And I called my husband in and I was like, honey, because he was actually pretty, he was avoiding me. <laughs> it was just a really bad, bad time. <laughs> I called him in and I was like, honey, you have to know that I just sniffed this oil three times, four times. And look at how I am now. I am so much calmer than I was before. And I was like totally in my brain stem, shaking, crying, just having a really, really hard time. And so that really blew me away. It was my first introduction to these oils really helping me emotionally and to know that each one of them, no matter what they're labeled, whether they're labeled, you know, peppermint or lavender or stress away or forgiveness or hope or release, um, they all have that potential to impact us emotionally. And that's because they all um, are distilled with a level of respect for that plant and the energetic aspect of that plant. Gary Young and Young Living are the only ones to do that with their plants. Um, you can distill them, a, you know, a bunch of plants any way that you want to, to be able to get just the flavor or just the scent or, you know, some, some great supportive aspects. But part of their testing is to ensure that it has the same level of frequency um, as they want from that plant. And that frequency, I'll talk about it a little bit, bit more, but that's what makes them so emotionally supportive of us. So, um, so I really got into it and I had already been learning a lot about um, emotions and our body and how our emotions tie into our physical health. I've kind of been on, on that journey for a while, um, it, but that stress away experience was the first time that I connected that triangle of um, physical health, uh, emotional health, and the oils. So that's when I got into this book, and if your book doesn't look like mine, it soon will. Tab it up and get to know it. Um, I spend a lot of time just looking through this book and reading through the emotions, reading through the oils, looking at the body points in the back. And that alone has helped me a lot with my self-awareness and um, understanding myself more. We have learned to, our society, our culture, our families, ourselves, our just our expectations of um, how we're supposed to behave in this culture, we have a tendency to really suppress our emotions, ignore them, and not um, learn to work through them. We have learned, especially again in this culture, to look elsewhere to solve our problems, both physically and emotionally. We look um, externally. So, um, you know, in, in addictions or alcohol or, um, you know, to, things that we go to to extremes to be able to avoid dealing with stuff um, of our own. We've been, there's a really good quote, and instead of just mumbling around, I'm going to read it to you. This book is another great book. Carol Truman. Does that read properly to you guys? Anyways, Feelings Buried Alive Never Die, Carol Truman. So this has been another great resource for me, and the first part of the book really um, explains all this stuff. So. 
too many of us have not been taught or perhaps not allowed to be cognizant of what's going on inside our mind and our body. Perhaps due to overwhelming pain or abuse, our early conditioning kept us from being consciously aware of our feelings and thoughts. Consequently, it's impossible for us to be sensitive or mindful of them today. Or we could simply be so accustomed to turning our pain and hurt over to something else, like drugs and food, um, or someone else to fix. And we do that, not, and that's just not therapy. That could be anything, like in our, in our relationships, you know, you might be feeling something that you don't like about yourself, and instead of pausing and dealing with it, you turn it over and, and blame it on somebody else or put that responsibility on somebody else, most likely your, your spouse or um, some, you know, probably children or other p close people in your life. We, we don't like something, and so we push it away, and then we put that responsibility on them to fix or for them to do something differently so that then we no longer feel that way. You guys with me on that? Um, I do that. That's why I'm uh, familiar with it. <laughs> um, so we turn it over to someone else to fix that our ability has been conscious to be consciously aware of what is taking place inside ourselves has just turned off. So we're just no longer able to recognize what's going on inside of us. It's usually for these reasons we haven't been schooled in how to resolve our feelings for themselves. So, you know, the majority of our, our, our consciousness is either fragmented or just, or just missing entirely. So that's kind of a big step in this. And I think the oils really help us because of that attraction that we can have to them. Um, they, can, they can really guide you with um, recognizing how you're feeling by, um, you know, you do, you discover, you have your oils out, you put them around, you're paying attention to them, you're checking them out every day, grabbing an oil, putting it on. And if there's one that you keep coming back to, or maybe one that you're just like kind of turned off by, that's a, that's a really great indicator of something that might be going on. And this book, the releasing emotional patterns can help us identify that stuff. So, okay, I should look at my notes. Um, so we know that our emotions impact us, right? You have um, a physiological response to your emotions. Um, just thinking about like almost getting into a car accident or something, you feel that and that, that feeling takes over your body and maybe makes you shake or um, you know, your, your heart rate definitely speeds up and your breathing speeds up and your mind speeds up, everything speeds up, that's your brainstem, that's, that's the way your body is designed to work, to be able to get out of there and figure things out fast, right? So that's your physiological response to those emotions as well. Um, you can also have a physiological response to something really, really positive. You know, you've suddenly got a really great um, information or surprise or, you know, um, something really happy and that you just feel that and it takes over you and, and you, you're glowing, you feel so good and you're, you're radiating that feeling as well. So um, we... <laughs> The way that our lives are today, we're impacted constantly by all of these emotions that are just changing us on a rate on a daily basis. And instead of having a really calm, stress-free life like we were supposed to have, we've created this busy, busy, busy life where we're encountering daily stress. And what's happening is your cortisol levels, your physiological body is having to be at a higher level all the time to be able to, hi Patrick, to be able to respond to all of that stress. And you never get a chance to really calm down and bring that down and process it and breathe through it. So part of that self-awareness and those moments that you need to take to, um, to, to help yourself identify what's going on is going to help you bring that that level down and calm and breathe and you know you may do that through meditation or a uh, three or four minute essential oil meditation which is a wonderful thing to do just try and program that into your day at least once where you take your, your drops of oil and you just spend like four minutes sitting there and just give yourself that time to bring everything down and rebalance and reground. Um, but let's see. Um, when 
we're having that inundated level of stress or you know emotion whatever that might be and stress is such an umbrella term for different emotions right so i'm using an umbrella term for for different emotions um when you're having that ongoing it really starts to impact your your outlook and how you're um, functioning on a daily basis um, if you let that stuff weigh you down and layer and layer and layer and layer without taking that time to release it and let it go it can start impacting who you are as a person right it can change um it can change who you are really um it can change your perspective on life it can change you the people in your life because of how your personality is being changed by this um but also what can impact us is so our daily stuff but also the stuff that we've had um as early as in utero you know in infancy in childhood the um the messages that we've been sent about ourselves about our world um about you know about life how life is supposed to be and some authors and researchers and scientists and myself included even go back to say past lives in fact there's a lot of research now that shows that our dna carries emotions and we can transfer that down to ourselves and you'll find that you know we all have the same traits as a lot of our family members and that can be um that same emotional response, that behavior pattern is transferred down. How we handle stress is transferred down from our families. It's a way of behaving. So um, we all might respond similarly. I am certainly teaching my children <laughs> how to respond to stress based on how I'm responding to it, right? They see me on a probably daily basis, you know, responding to different levels of stress and they're learning that stuff. They're picking that up. I've learned it from my family and I'm, I'm teaching it to them. So I'm working really hard at finding better tools for that so that I can, you know, give them better tools so that they can have more success in their life and hopefully less well, less overall stress, a better attitude, and less physical ailments. I know that um, with stress, I keep it in my back. I just store it right here and all up and down my spine. One reason I'm <laughs> Um, so this is a great oil for me, right? This is great for your spine. This is great for your confidence. There's a great example of a connection between your physical health and your emotional health. Um, so, and I've, I've learned that. I've learned, yeah, Amanda. She lost, she didn't get high okay. tutorial. Yeah. I'm going to just quickly tag on to that. And I know you keep saying stress, but I want to say like, especially um, in life with things that happen, like if things are sad or if things are joyous or if things are or difficult and you don't deal with that emotion at that time, it can, if you're not dealing with that anger or that hurt or that um, anything, it's going to store in your, in your body and come out as some sort of ailment later on. And you're not going to know what that is if you're not in like learning about how emotions and everything are stored in your body. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like an immediate thing. Like she, you're saying you're, you're showing your kids how you're dealing with stress on that daily level, but even just like dealing with hard times in your life, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And not, not dealing with them at the moment, but storing those emotions and then never dealing with them. And then they come out in some crazy ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. Thank you. So like, for example, with my back, um, I, that's what kind of stops me. That's when I, when I get too much going on in my life, my back will give out. My kids see that my body just stops and my kids see that. And that the more I've been working on this stuff, I'm like, that is my mom's story and that is my grandmother's story. And it probably goes back even further than that. So all of us, if we start looking at our health conditions, our health issues, and how we deal with this, this overall term of stress in our life, we might start seeing connections. 
There are lots of other books that can help you identify that stuff. This is a great one. Louise Hay, um, Heal Your Body. This is um, just a small book. She has a lot of other great books, but this one can, you can look up by um, kind of different ailments and go across and you find the emotions that are attached to it. So there's a lot of people, um, I don't know, seers or what you want to call them, mediums, people that have just have that ability to, to know how our physical self is connected to our emotions. So even in this book, um, you can look up your physical um, stuff. So even post-nasal drip is listed, but um, shins and rash, psoriasis, shoulders, um, spleen, there's all kinds of stuff in here. So the more you start to grab these books and start looking in them about what, um, what might be um, impacting you guys, then it's going to help you be able to connect it to those emotions and have more awareness. It's a long journey um, to work on this stuff, but it's an amazing one. And you have some of the most powerful tools at your fingertips to help you on this journey, okay? These oils are going to support you so much more than anything you've ever experienced. Um, okay, let me get back to my notes. Okay, um, so the things that you've been learning about yourself and your behavior and, the, and um, your beliefs about life and your beliefs about yourself, um, we all start saying things to ourselves, especially when you look in the mirror, you might have things that you have said to yourself, I am such and such. You walk past a mirror and you might, you know, say something negative to yourself or say something positive to yourself. You might... It, um, Think about doing something and then stop yourself because you have a message or belief about yourself that you're not able to do it. Um, anybody have any examples of those? So, um, let's see. Yeah, you guys need to help me because I'm, I'm nervous right now, by the way. <laughs> I've got tons of oils here and I'm obviously doing well, but, um, okay. So this is whatever it is. It's all in our minds. It's all just been created by our, our minds and we have the power. Science backs this up. Your experience backs this up. I'll back you up that you have the ability to change this. And Donna of, wanted to, Donna, just unmute yourself. And oh, talk. Thank you. I did, but I didn't want to interrupt her. You know, what comes to my mind is just even when a teacher or an adult says to a child, you will never amount to anything. And, and, and that really impacts that child's life. They need somebody else to speak positively into them and say, you can, you can do anything you want to do, or you're incredible or whatever. I mean, yes, it's self-talk, but it's also things that we say to others. It's like cursing them. Mm -hmm. and um, we need someone else to come along and, and, and break that out of our minds and say, and say that's not truth. This is what truth is. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of an example. Mm -hmm. And that stuff carries with us. We've, we've been told so many different messages um, as a child growing up, even, even our culture and our society as women, as men. Yeah, Amanda. Something as simple as, which I've had people tell me this all the time, is like, as a kid, you'd um, say you filled the dishwasher and then your dad came in right behind you and took everything out and refilled it in. That subconscious right there told you that your job was not good enough mm -hmm. and that I have to redo everything that you do because you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so many messages that we've learned that are so subtle and they've just become a part of our life and they just become a part of who we are that we tend not to notice them. And so take the next week or so to try and stop and catch yourself on some of those. And even, even if it's not something you want to deal with right then and there or change right then and there, just try and stop yourself and catch it and maybe write it down, um, you know, or record your voice telling yourself on your phone, write a note in your phone, or just do something to bring some awareness to that. And then, 
put it on a little pile so that you know these are some things that maybe I'd like to work on in the future. There's some little things that I'd like to change about myself. I'd like to start talking to myself better about the way I look or about the way I talk or about the way I, I talk to my children or the way I eat. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of things that we can do and they're just little things here and there, but they, when they start to work together, you can amount to a lot and really start changing your outlook on life. You're, you know, being more optimistic, um, having a better relationship with the people in your life. There's so many things that these little guys can do. So, um, as Amanda was talking about also with, and I was kind of talking about with my back, um, your emotions that you have. So I've just been saying stress, right? There's so many different emotions that you can have. And that's one of the things I like about this book and how I said that I just go through it a lot because there's all these emotions listed in here. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's an emotion. Oh my gosh, I completely forgot about that. That's a way to feel also. So just skimming through it a lot helps me kind of have some self-awareness by um, controlling, by attacking, cope, crisis, criticism, difficulty, lack of direction, disassociation, dishonesty, feeling of emptiness. Um, so going through here, you can really start to get some awareness for yourself. So that's a great tool. Um, but what happens is those emotions, they, what they do is they come in through uh, what's called our chakras. So are like these vortexes of energy that bring everything in. We are these huge energetic beings. So without getting into too much science, everything is energy. All our atoms and neurons and, and protons and everything, they're just these little balls of energy and they're vibrating out. And so everything has that because everything's made up of atoms and, and all the, that little scientific stuff, right? So even my, this pen and this book and this table and my body and my animals and the trees outside, we all are these balls of energy and we're all vibrating. We're all made a level of noise that we can't actually hear um, but and we, we can't necessarily feel it all the time but you can feel that energy um, of other people you can sometimes tell that somebody came into the room even though you didn't hear them or you're driving along and you look really fast because you just have this feeling that somebody's looking at you and they are and it's just very bizarre or you walk into a room and you can tell that something just went down with the people that are in there right you just know that there was an argument you there, you, there's things like oh you could cut the tension with a knife right that's an example of that energy that you can that you're feeling or you can feel when somebody's in a really good mood that's all this energy that we're putting out there and I have a really cool picture of it so there are a lot of energy fields um, but they are all around us and vibrating at different um, strengths uh, all the time and and when you feel somebody's got like a negative energy about them where you're just like oh I'm not I'm not cool with that vibe you know they're sending off a weird vibe um, that's that's all of this stuff that you're feeling and sometimes people are clogged up or, or they can imagine maybe some of these things being in like a knot or um, you know blocked in different ways and we feel that we feel that so all this stuff is being sent out on a regular basis inside of our body as well so all of our organs everything about the inside of our body if we wanted to take it apart you could even look at all of those different pieces your heart has an energetic a level to it your liver your blood everything in our body also has its own little vibration because it's all matter so everything vibrates um, well, your emotions also have a vibration. They are these feelings that have come out and they're around us. And actually there's, a, there's feelings and emotions all around us all the time. And sometimes you'll catch something and you'll feel it. And there'll be this weird like, oh God, why did that just pop into my head? Why did I suddenly get taken on by this weird emotion? And I don't like that or, or suddenly feeling really good. Those are, those are just, that's all out there and it's around us all the time. So white angelica, this one is all taped up because my daughter taped it. But white, where are you? White angelica. This is a great one to have if you're super sensitive to those emotions that are around us. If you walk into that room and not only can you feel the tension, you know, and cut it with a knife, but it's impacting you and you're taking it on and you're like, oh my gosh, I, I got to get out of here. These people are tripping me out. <laughs> 
or you have friends that you know are, are talking to you and they want to share their story and you're like okay great I want to support you but let me get some white Angelica first because if you're that type of a person you might take on all of their stuff so all of those emotions can um, settle into our um, our physical body and um, they settle into the place that has the same frequency as that emotion so um, that's why you know things like joy settles in the heart and grief settles in the lungs um, anger settles in the liver so how um, Carolyn Mean has connected the oils and your emotions is by knowing the, the frequency of our oils. So knowing that purification is, has the same frequency as your liver and the emotion anger, we know that purification is great to put a drop over your hand and put it on your liver and help clear and release that anger. From there that's being stored but also heal um, those emotions clear and release those emotions as well so um, Idaho balsam fir and Idaho blue spruce are two really handy ones to have because these have some of the highest frequencies and kind of act as a chameleon for the oils so if you don't have an oil um, that you really are wanting to as work on emotional stuff. These guys are a great support. Um, so yes, you're not unmuted. Unmute yourself. Sorry, I just unmuted myself. Did you already talk about why? Um, I don't think you have because I was on. But how? Why we want to inhale when we want to deal with our emotions? Why we want to inhale them from our hands? because we want to reach the limbic system. Mm -hmm. So the limbic system is your actual emotional center of your brain that stores all of your emotional memory. So what we want to do is we want to relink these bad feelings with positive feelings linked to a, an oil that smells good. So you want to relink those positive emotions with that oil so that your body is retrained in that area. And like they say, it takes about five seconds for your body to recognize a smell and, and remember a memory. So that's your cellular emotional memory is your limbic system that sits right behind your olfactory system, which is right behind your nose, right in the middle of your head. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, so that's why smelling these oils, she's saying, smelling them is going in and really working with your body. So what we're gonna we're gonna do is we're gonna find some affirmations and the oil to use at the same time, and that is going to really supercharge your brain and your body and your ability to release and work on that emotion. So um, I'm going. Anybody have any questions before I get into the book or any comments you want to add to what I've been saying? Julia, can you hear me? Yes. Driving, so I can't. Um, I was just going to add the, about the affirmations. I really love to refer back to um, Dr. Emoto and all the studies that he did on the molecules of water and why yeah. how powerful words are um, because I think that the affirmation part gets skipped by people because it sounds kind of crazy to talk to yourself. <laughs> but our bodies are made up of 70% water and if you Google Dr. Emoto, I think it's E-M-M-O-T-O, -M -M I believe, you'll see these amazing pictures that he did using connecting words, you know, either writing it on the bottle of water or saying the words to the water molecules. And then he took pictures of the water molecules and all of the molecules that were spoken positive words to them are these beautiful snowflake-looking molecules. And the ones who, the ones where he said, things like you're ugly or I hate you or you're stupid. All of these water molecules are these really ugly things um, that kind of look like disease or cancerous cells. Um, and we are made up of water. So it's so important that we speak to ourselves positively because our cells actually changed based on how we talk to ourselves. So Julia is going to walk you through using the, the book and the affirmations and the oils, but just be sure that you're using the affirmations. Even if you don't feel that way, 
saying it out loud has huge power in how we change our physical body. So I just wanted to add that. I think it's really cool. Yeah, that study is beautiful. Looking at those little water molecules and seeing, like she said, these gorgeous snowflakes or different beautiful design that are all in sync and vibrant and healthy. And then looking at ones that are just, like she said, they look diseased. So um, that was really interesting. And there's also a fun um, activity you can do. I know some schools do it with kids as you get a couple different plants and put them in different parts of the room. And one plant you speak positively to. You say really wonderful things to that plant. And then the other plant you say negative things to. And there are, there's a very clear difference in the health of that plant afterwards. So that's why this um, conversation we're having is so important how we're talking to ourself, that, um, that self-care and that self-talk really does impact us. You, we may have learned this stuff from a very, very early age, and that's why I was saying it might be so um, hidden in our person and the way that we um, relate and behave that it might be hard to identify at first, but that's why I was saying just try and give a little bit of extra attention to yourself this next week and see if you can catch anything um, that you're saying to yourself or, you know, changing your plans because of something or, you know, wow, I wish I really could be more like this. That's the stuff that I'm talking about that we can work on and we can start catching it before it, um, or, or, you know, start healing it before if it already hasn't um, started hurting you physically. So, okay, with this book, the first part, um, oh, I forgot I was going to read some stuff to you guys too. So I'm going to open it up. I have the 2015 edition, and I'm going to read page seven, second paragraph. So... Um, the essence of our life experience is to have experiences so that we can learn, grow, and master. The experiences we learn from are the ones that get our attention. For most of us, it takes pain to cause us to look at a situation. However, all too often, the emotional trauma produces more pain than we can deal with, so we block it off from our conscious awareness. So sometimes... When when we have um, an emotion that um, we're, we're continuing to neglect and neglect and neglect. Uh -oh, it... something's wrong. Can you try again? Oh my gosh, Siri, go away. Um, we, it, we, we neglect emotion for such a long time that it starts kind of knocking on the door and turning into a little bit of pain for us to say, hey, you need to start paying attention to me in this area. You're not dealing with this. You're not processing it. You're not releasing it. Um, and it starts letting you know. So when you have a pain or discomfort or something that's going on, use these tools that you have to look it up and just learn about yourself and see if maybe there's a connection to an emotion. And maybe if you start working on that emotion, you'll find some relief. So um, since we're supposed to get wiser as we get older, learning from life's experiences, the unhealed emotional trauma eventually resurfaces. So we keep encountering the same stuff over and over and over again until we work on it. Because there's something that we need to learn from that. And what's the basic lesson is to come from love rather than fear. All emotions either stem from love or from fear. And fear ultimately comes from a disconnection from your spiritual source, whatever that might be for you. Um, the body holds your emotional patterns regardless of your conscious awareness. Since the body never lies and holds the block energy, it's a good indicator of emotional, unresolved emotional issues. So now that I've been doing all this stuff for such a long time, when I start to feel achy or something, like last night, my shoulder was really tight just on this wrong side, one side. I grab this book and I look it up. I'm like, all right, what's going on with me? So now I start really using that as a tool. If you've talked to me in person and in my personal life, I, if you start telling me about an issue that you have, I'm more than likely grabbing one of these books and looking it up for you. <laughs> this, this awareness that it's brought me has been so amazing. And time after time, I'm sending, you know, the emotional uh, background of, one, of an ailment that you told me about. Maybe you're in your family history or with something that's going on with you or your spouse. And it continues to be right on. So 
it's really interesting. Some emotions are so strong and evident that they're easy to recognize. And when this is the case, you can approach the emotion by going straight to the emotional place. So if you already know your emotion, you can go straight there. But sometimes we bury those emotions and we store them in our body until sufficient pressure builds, producing that pain or disease in that area. And then you can use the, um, in the back of the book, there's all the different points on your body. So we're gonna get into that. Okay. Okay, I said this, but I'm gonna say this again to make sure I got it clearly. Emotions themselves are stored in the body in its organs, glands, and systems. Feelings are taken in through the chakras or energy centers along the midline of the body and then fed into the meridian system, which consists of energy channels that run over and through your body. Since, since each organ has a vibrational frequency, as do the emotions, the emotions will settle in the area corresponding to that frequency. Disease occurs when the body's vibrational frequency drops below a certain point. The human body has a measurable frequency that's around like 60 something megahertz, and that's all been measured by scientists and stuff. I know it's been measured that just holding a cup of coffee, probably not a beautiful, like organic, grass fed. Um, brain power coffee, but you know, but hold, just holding something in your hand like that, it can lower your frequency. And then um, your frequency is even lowered when you have a cold or you're sick or you have, emo you know, negative emotions that you're, they've measured how much lower your frequency goes. And then disease settles in at an even much lower frequency and then eventually death as well. So essential oils can raise your body's frequency. Um, they do this because they vibrate at a high frequency and they transfer that frequency to your body. So I don't know if you've noticed, but since you've brought oils into your home, if you're using them regularly, you're probably already feeling better. Things have started to change in your life, in your home, in your family, whether physically or both emotionally. And so this is just another tool, a more detailed way of using these oils. Okay. So, um, let's get to know your book. So the first part, she has um, all of the great information that you can read at some point, and then you go to the references section, okay? The first part, um, and you might want to flag them and tag them, that'll help. The first part is all of your emotions. So for me, that's page 35 through lots of emotions that you got to get aware of through page 54. And then the next one is your oils reference. So then we're going to have Young Living Essential Oils listed in this book. Not surprising. So that goes from page 62 through 80 for me. And oops, not 80. Through 71. And then it gets into the body section. So there's the three ways that you're going to be able to use this book, either by looking it up through, through the actual emotion that you might be feeling. And that might happen because first you looked it up in one of these books, like you looked up more specific terms and found it in this book. And then you can transfer those, um, the emotion that's associated with it to this book. So for example, this one doesn't say like rash, but this one does. So I can look up rash in here, find the emotion associated with it, and then go to this book and look up that emotion. Okay, I'll, if you guys have questions about that, we can work on that later. But, um, and then, then the back part has your different body places listed and then in the charts. So all the way in the back, there's the charts. Okay, so this is a great way to also kind of figure out what's going on. So like I said, my shoulder was hurting last night. I'm going to go to page 93 and I'm going to look up. There's a couple points there. There's nerve and first rib and a couple other places. So if I was wanted to look up what was going on with me here last night in this book, I would find those points. And then I would flip through to the um, to where the, the locations are listed. So I'm going to look up first rib. And I'll go through and do all of these until I find it. And when you find it, you know it's obvious. You're like, mm. yeah, that's it. Okay, first rib. So it says the emotion is manipulation. 
and the oil is basil. Okay, so right at the top, manipulation doesn't necessarily make sense to me, but I'm still gonna follow it through and go all the way to the front where the emotions are listed and find manipulation because the way it's listed in there, for me, that's page 46. The emotion is manipulation. The other side is your goal emotion, and that's understanding. Your way out is your affirmation, and that's what Stephanie was talking about. This affirmation is so important to, for you to say this out loud. Um, write it down. Put it on your bathroom mirror. Put it on a sticky note. Write it on your hand. Put it everywhere. If that is the right emotion for you, that's the right oil, that's the right affirmation, you need to have that everywhere and say it out loud. So the way out for manipulation is I see what is realistic. That's a good one anyways, right? I see what is realistic. And then basil is the oil for that. Basil is a part of the raindrop kit. It goes right here. So I would be putting basil here on my shoulder and saying, I see what is realistic. I see what is realistic. And probably smelling it, I'd probably be like, I see what is realistic. That's how I use this book when I start from my body point, okay? So you guys grabbed some oils. Um, pick one of them and go to the middle section, the oil reference. It's going to be around page 61, 62. And look up your oil. Hi, Celeste. Do you have your book? Are you doing it? Hi, Vivian. Where's Vivian? I can't see Vivian. There she is. <laughs> oh, I see why you're hiding. <laughs> Where's Heather? Okay. So um, some of you have already done this before. Hi, Kara. So um, have you found your, your oil? Any, has anybody not found their oil? Mine only has Peace and Calming 2 listed, not the original Peace and Calming. Okay, the, because he, when he, when he puts the, the, um, the oils together, he's looking for a certain frequency, so the frequency is going to be right, right on target for it. So, okay. yeah. Great question. Thank you. Yeah, and sometimes your oil isn't going to be listed in here, and I'll talk about that in a second. So, you found your um, emotion and your body point location, your alarm point. Let's go, let's go to the alarm point first. So now peace and calming and some of the other ones have several listed, right? So you have to go through there and pick it out. And a lot of the times it's gonna be right there for you. If you're not seeing that right now, let's just use this as a tool and follow it through, okay? But um, sometimes, and probably for most of you, you're going to be like, mm, yeah, that's, that's the one. So I'm going to just go with the first one. Peace and calming. The emotion is addiction. And the alarm point is brain. So for your emotion, look at the alarm point all the way at the end. And then flip towards the back of the book. And you'll see the charts. But you'll also see the body reference listed pages around page 72. So you can look it up there if you don't have an idea, like brain, that's going to be in the pictures of the head, right? So I'm going to jump there. And sure enough, it's in the head picture. So you find your point. And that's like your access point for that emotion. So that's a great place to put the oil wherever it is. I haven't found it, but that's a great place to put that um, oil. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> um, that's a great place to put the oil. Like say, I'm going to put peace and calming right there. If that's my point, if that's not what you're feeling, if you're feeling it, that it needs to go someplace else, put it in that other location, wherever that might be, if that's over your heart or over your ears or um, over your stomach or wherever you're really feeling it, do that. But so this book is a great guide. Okay. So you found your body point. Everybody, has anybody not found your body point? Celeste, you have to unmute yourself. Let me see. 
Okay, what's your question? Uh, um, I my oil I picked tonight that's in the diffuser is Envision. <laughs> that's beautiful. Uh, so did you I find it in your book? Oh, I'm tr having trouble finding it. I don't okay. know. So the I'm gonna look in the um, um the oil section. You guys know I, I made a hat that says Envision on it. That's so awesome. Envision has two um, emotions associated with it, confined and overwhelmed. So for you, you would figure out which one that is and then look up the alarm point. So whether that's um, intuitive or vision, and then you'd go to the back of the book and find those. Or do you have a book? Yeah, you do, I right? I do. Yeah. But I, I okay. can't find it right this second. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. So then you'd go to the back. Like, um, do you, is it confined or overwhelmed? Either of those? Overwhelmed. Okay. So vision is right here. That's your point. And then I'm going to go. So then everybody has your oil and your alarm point. And for your emotion, now we're going to go back to the front of the book to the emotions section. So I'm going to look up overwhelmed for Celeste. Oh, and your way out, your affirmation is, I focus my energy. I'm going to pause and get my hat and have everybody figure out where they are. <laughs> See if I can still wear it. <laughs> That's adorable. I wore this for the... Um, the fair with flair at the Young Living Beauty School. I didn't win anything, but I was very proud of myself. I love Envision, if you can't tell. So, um, so if that was my oil for me, or whatever the oil is, and whatever the emotion is, I'm gonna be putting on a vision, Envision and saying, I focus my energy. And that's actually um, my daughter's oil. I realized she was, um, she gets really overwhelmed and overstimulated and so much is going on and she just crashes and she loses herself and I focus my energy and she smells it and we can kind of apply it a little bit over here and I focus my energy and it just helps to bring everything down and pull it together. Anybody else need help finding their stuff? Unmute yourself and say hello. Everybody finding it? Did I teach that good of a class that you guys are all on it? Wow. Kara, yeah? Okay. Manuel and I both found our, ours, and I'm, I'm going to do mine now. Good. Oh, good. So this, this book is amazing, you guys, for that kind of stuff. Um, and there's so many ways that you can find, you know, what oil is helping you. But the biggest thing is stopping and having that awareness over yourself. You have to stop and say, what is going on with me right now? Why do I have this block? Why am I behaving this way? Why am I feeling like this physically or emotionally? And stop for a second and and write it down or or if you have the book in front of you right then and there I actually have it on my phone you can um, get it on those readers Amazon the reader on your phone Kindle um, yeah. yeah will you will you look up Melissa for me <gasps> I don't have my book I'm too busy eating my ice cream are you teasing me I'm not. I'm asking you oh. seriously. So, okay. It's a tease to me because I'm a nerd when it comes to this book. So Melissa isn't in here, but apparently at Dr. Mean's um, last training that she did in San Diego, she told everybody what the, what Melissa was for. And, oh. um, and Michaela was going to tell me, but she's gone back to me. So Okay. I'll Sorry. I just smelt it for the first time today and I was wondering because <laughs> okay. I... Yeah, because I was like, oh, I like, I, I didn't like it, and then I liked it. It was just a weird, like, the initial scent was like, uh, and then the after scent was like a really, like, myrtle lemony, and I was like, oh, I like that. So I couldn't, I was like, I wonder what the emotion is connected to it. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I can't wait to try that one. I know Vivian's family, or Vivian's friends have had a really amazing, successful um, experience with Melissa and it's so cool that it is being given away to us right now because that's an expensive one um, 
So if you don't have the oil that's listed, first of all, your starter kit oils, if that's what you have to start with, they are, the majority of them are in this book and they, they are, um, all have really dynamic, emotional, supportive stuff. If you don't have the oil that's listed in here, a lot of them are blends, so you could look up the blend and see if you do have one of the oils that are in there. Like I said, um, Idaho Blue Spruce and Idaho Balsam Fir are kind of the chameleons for emotions, so they are a great substitute. Um, but also just any oil that you just feel like you want to use, if you're using it consistently and saying an affirmation with it, then it's going to work. It's going to help you. So like, for example, I actually found this kind of like the sore spot down here and I looked it up and um, the oil was joy and the um, affirmation is um, I trust my vision. And I really, really liked that, and that meant a lot to me. But for me, I just wasn't feeling joy. I was feeling abundance. And so I'm using abundance on that location and saying that affirmation. The power of your voice and then using an oil going into that limbic system is just going to work together so much more powerful than anything you've ever experienced. Now, Dr. Mean says that you need to, once you find something that you want to work on, you need to work on this a lot. 18 times a day um, for seven weeks, if need be, uh, and you'll, you'll know. You'll know um, I've been able to clear stuff out really quickly, um, but other stuff is I'm having to work on longer. Sometimes I'm working on something and other stuff comes up. So I'll put that oil aside and start working on the things that came up and then I'll get back to that oil. Sometimes I'm just not ready to work on it. I had one oil that was in my tray that was calling to me and every time I walked by it, it was staring at me. <laughs> It was. I could feel that oil. And I was like, I am not ready for you. I am not ready for you. But finally, I found this, this point that was kind of hurting. I looked it up, and it was that oil. And it was perfect timing because I was about to, um, I was starting to feel the buildup of um, going down to see family. And um, that oil was was for that point, and the affirmation was so right on. So I was like, all right, it's time. I got to work on this. I got to do it. I got to get through this. So I started using that oil. I started saying that affirmation. I kept that oil in my pocket, and I said that affirmation over and over and over again. And you guys, I got through that visit with my family, and I did great. <laughs> I did great. It changed my life. It changed my perspective on everything. I was so much more proud of myself and confident because I was like, look, I handled it. For the first time in my life, I handled that. And that was because of that oil and that affirmation. So you have some amazing tools in your hands, okay? Whatever oils you have, use them. Find your affirmation and write it down. Like I said, I have I trust my vision across my bathroom mirror, and I say that to myself every day. And um, love on yourself. Take care of yourself. Believe in yourself. Um, I have dragon time sitting in front of me because I also wanted to say that sometimes you just need some dragon time. <laughs> Maybe that's all it is. <laughs> um, but also, it's also a reminder, so that we also need to be thinking about supporting our emotions. I mean, our... Um, our hormones as well as our gut. Um, that's two other full complete classes that talk about how um, both your endocrine system and your gut can impact your your emotions. Um, so sometimes it's just dragon time. It was for me today. But let's see. Do you guys have any other class questions for me? Have you um, printed out the additions or the modifications that Dr. Main has done? Right. The so the 2015 edition to the 2017 edition, the only differences that we were able to find were that she changed peace and calming to peace and calming 
2 and Valor to Valor 2, but like I was telling Kara, it's going to have the same frequency because of the way we handle our oils, the way he makes his blends. So that's really not a significant difference. And then I was told that Melissa was added, but it's not in here. It's not in the 2017 edition. So um, hopefully Michaela will get that for me, but I don't really see any difference between the 2015, 2017. But I thought there was something to print out. I heard that too, but I have not been able to get that information. So maybe if you have your sources and I'll double check with my sources and we can put it in the event page. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys going to work on this? You going to pick something? Pick something easy to start with. Don't pick something crazy hard unless you're just like, if you're just like that. But just find something, maybe just cruise the book and find something. Yeah, that sounds really cool. I want to work on that. And just try it out. Be gentle with yourself. Love on yourself. Take care of yourself. I have a really great quote on here that I, oops, where's my camera? There I am. Um, I have Louise Hay, the lady who writes this book, um, has a daily calendar, and I have those, I, I have pulled off the daily affirmations, and they're all over my house, but um, I know that I am worth healing. I'm gentle with myself, knowing that I'm doing the best I can with the knowledge and the understanding that I have, and I have that on the inside of my book because this stuff can get really hard. <laughs> it can get really hard. It can bring up some stuff. It can, um, you can feel discouraged or get stuck and feel like I don't want to move forward. I don't want to work on this right now. I'm happy in my, my place that I'm at. And, um, there are oils to help you with that as well. <laughs> Moving forward into the future, transformation. There's some great ones that can help you get over a little hump if you're feeling stuck in something. Um, in fact, stuck is listed in here, and I think it's lemon. Um, but here's today's affirmation. Today, I joyfully look forward to the future. So I congratulate all of you guys for being in this class and taking this on and um, learning about it. There are so many resources. Part of the reason why I love Young Living and I love our group is because it's so much more than just physical health. We really want to support each other towards working on ourselves and improving ourselves, right? Just from Young Living, I've gotten so many cool books. The Ula book is a great one and the Ula oils. If there's something that you want to work on um, for finding more balance in your life, this is a great kit to have. Field, family, faith, fitness, friends. Um, and they all come with a little affirmation that you can read if, you, if you're feeling like you need to work on something specific there and have the book to go along with it. Obviously, the feelings kit is a must-have for especially moms and everybody. Butterflies in a bottle talks about um, the oils and how they work with our emotions. Molecules of emotions. This is another great book that really shows you the science of it all. You guys, I have so many books. And then books that I've learned that I've gotten just through Young Living and our support group is things like Train Your Brain. And you are a badass. Man, you are. We need this stuff, you guys. 13 things mentally strong people don't do. Um, there's a lot of really great resources for working on yourself and improving the things that you want to improve about yourself and, you know, growing and developing and changing and, and enjoying life. It's all about enjoying life and coming, like she said, from a place of love. So anything everybody? really quick, <clears throat> something I like to do that I, um, that's just kind of a fun little, if you, I love to like smell an oil and if I absolutely cannot stand it, like my favorite thing to do is to go into the emotions book and find out what emotion is attached to it. And it's often pretty right on. And, um, that's, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun little thing to do. I always like if I'm loving an oil or I don't like an oil, I always go straight to the emotions. It's the first thing I look at when I'm dealing with my oils. It's kind of fun. Yeah. I've noticed that they change 
sm some of them will change smell for me over time. And that's, yes. like you said, it's a great indicator. Like I'll, I'll be loving on an oil and then I go to pick it up after a few weeks or a month and I'm like, whoa, what is going on with this? And yeah, now, now that I know, like you, I run yeah. to my book and I'm like, well, what is up with that? And I think this is my theory. I think that when there's an oil, because sometimes we're super attracted to something and it's right on, right? Like you're just like crazy attracted to something. And like Celeste, right? You had Copaiba and you're like, oh my God, she just kept coming back. That one I really like. That one I really like. And we look it up and we're like, bam, right on. That happens over and over and over again. But sometimes there's one that we're just, just disgusted by turned off not liking not enjoying whatever you want to call it or to whatever degree and I think it's because that one we're not it's like a protective measure we're not really ready to work on it yet like it's we're just we're just not open to to processing that yet and and um and for us, we're like, we have, since we know we have our supportive resources and our tools, we're like, okay, I'm going to take it on anyways, or maybe I need to wait a little bit. But I don't know. That's, that's what I've been thinking is that it's just um, a more of a protective measure that we're not ready to process that one quite yet. But we do, and we rock it. Anybody else? Where is everybody? Christina, Hallie, Kara, Vivian. Alicia, Holly's just basking in the midst of her diffuser. What do you have going there, Holly? I have thieves going right now. I don't know. Something has told me to put thieves in the diffuser and in my mouth and on the kids' feet. Nice. Good. Can you see it? In the yeah. <laughs> it's right next to it. <laughs> <laughs> along with all my oils. Nice. Yes. Okay. We good, you guys? How did this? Helped. Yeah. That helped a lot. I've had this book sitting there for a while and I, every once in a while I pick it up, but now I know how to actually use it, which is so awesome. Like I'm not gonna be able to put it down now. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying mine is so worn out <laughs> I love this book yeah and you can you can get all sneaky on people now like when you know that they're super attracted to an oil or turned off by an oil like you're at a class you're teaching a one-on-one and somebody's like oh what is that you're like let me look it up really fast and you're like uh-huh <laughs> that's that's the fun part you're all hmm let's look at that. Yeah. Amanda's probably been doing that to me for a while now. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Patrick. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad you're going to use it. This is the whole whole other level of Young Living, you guys. This is what makes Young Living so much more special. Is this whole other aspect of personal development and emotional health. I and mean, you don't you don't get this this level any place else nor this level of support you guys we're all here for each other and um you know that's that's a really big deal so if you can't thanks find for where i'll be yeah <laughs> thanks for having this zoom talia it's kind of nice to be able to do kind of all of this in your own house huh you guys but like still like learn and have the information. I know it's different when you're in person and like you can kind of um, smell the oils and it's, it's a little bit different, but um, it's, this Zoom was pretty cool. You liked it? Good. You're I like blue. It. I, I love take it. That. I take that um, really seriously. Good. <laughs> okay. Well, good. I mean, no. the last time we had an emotions class, it was in person and it was at Talia's and one of my members, had a massive emotional response to the oils and ended up throwing up. It was crazy. At home, not at my house. Yeah, at, at home. Like she was like, uh, when Talia busted out the feelings kit. Oh boy. 
Yeah, and that's that's why it's so important to take it slow. If you need to take it slow, you know, the that's it's the same detoxing effect for your whole body, the same with the emotions and and you can really feel some of this stuff come up. And so so take it easy. You know, maybe maybe not going right here to your hand is too too powerful, but just maybe just having the bottle open and on your desk and just kind of getting the smell a little bit here and there, that that can help so much. But 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 be easy on yourself and only take it as fast as you can. You want to be successful. Talia? Yeah. So two of the oils I picked tonight weren't in here and they're singles. So I'm trying to remember if you addressed that or not. I remember you saying something about looking in the blends. Yeah. But um, did you have something else to say to that? I just, I missed it if you did. No. Two of your oils? Oh, man. So, yeah, um, <laughs> um, yeah, so if you can go to the virtual office and when, um, when you're in like quick order, if you just start, if you just type in an oil, a single oil, it'll come up with every single product that has that oil in it. It's a really cool tool. So, you know, um, I know it's not lemon, but cause lemon's in the book, but if you just typed in lemon, it would come up with everything. And so maybe citrus fresh is in the book. And so then you can go look up citrus fresh. Um, so you can try that, but if that's not working, the more this this is this is a tool to help help you figure things out. So um, you'll learn from this, but the more you can trust yourself and you can you can just look through those look through the affirmations in there, look through the affirmations in some of these other books. Come borrow my books. Um, you'll find the affirmation that's going to work for you. And if you want that oil, one of those two oils that you picked tonight that you're just really needing. And, um, you know, it's that self-awareness. The more we work on that self-awareness, then the more we're going to figure this stuff out kind of on its own. Like I've been doing this for so long that now I, when I have my affirmation, I knew that I, that affirmation was right, but the oil just wasn't the right one for me. And so I picked a different oil and that's what I'm using. So, um, Find an affirmation for yourself. Use that oil. Find a place to put that. Put that. Apply it, and and stick with it, and and um, it'll be right. The book is just a tool, right? Just like yeah. iTovi is a great tool for us to give some insight to our bodies and our emotions. Um, you are the expert, and you're the one who's going to figure it out. So all this stuff is just research, research and support to to um, learn more about yourself and how you can help yourself. Good question. Anybody else? Hello. Okay. Well, you guys can totally message me, um, call me, get together, have coffee. Let's talk about something. Um, I love this topic. If you know me, you know I love this topic. So I'm more than happy to really talk to you about this and figure it out and set some plans up or some goals or whatever you want to do. I can help you with that. And um, I love it. So it's been amazing for me. It's really changed my life. And I know I still have a lot of work to do, but I'm excited about it because of these tools. These are amazing. So congrats to you guys. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Talia. You're welcome. All right. Well, good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.